Yeah. All right, I had a customer that had their vehicle stolen uh, at least once, and uh, just the other day there was an attempt to uh, break in and steal it again, um, and the club was removed. So I'm pretty sure that the, that the thief's gonna be back to try to steal this vehicle. So they wanted me to install a kill switch, and I could have installed a standard kill switch anywhere on the fuel line to the, to the fuel pump, uh, what I like to do is I like to take out the injector relay or the injector fuse, but then you got to get in the in the engine compartment. You got to put the fuse back in every time, and if you if the thief has time, they can know that that one specific fuse is missing if they know what they're doing. But it's usually dark, and you usually don't have a lot of time to screw around with stuff like this. So uh, you can put a toggle switch in uh, that'll act as an, as a good kill switch. Uh, it's just power in from uh, the fuel pump. You can get, get under the fuse box and get the, the fuel pump relay output wire. Run that back inside to a switch and just turn the switch on. It provides power to the fuel pump. Turn the switch off, no power to the fuel pump. And then you come home at night and you have groceries and you grab your groceries, you get out of the car, you forget to turn the switch off, two o'clock in the morning, thief steals your car. So. That kind of switch isn't what I was going for. Uh, I wanted to make a, a self-killing switch. So I came up with a concept that was an easy idea, uh, difficult application. And I'm gonna draw what I was thinking, and then I'm gonna go ahead and draw how this actually played out and why. So the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to remove the injector fuse. Uh, so I found the injector circuit as you'll see in the video here, I found the injector circuit, which also in this vehicle controls the ECM. So there's the injector circuit, and I want to kill that, so I'm going to put a relay in here. Now I'm trying to make a self-latching relay. So injector in, relay, injector out. Now I need a kill switch, so I'm going to get a ignition power source, and I'm going to put a button on that. There's a momentary button, and that goes in to feed the relay, and we'll just ground this side out. Now, while I'm holding this button down, the injectors will get voltage and be able to start the vehicle, but as soon as I let go of it, the injectors won't have any voltage, it'll die. So I need to make this self-latching. So the output voltage, once it's started, the output voltage here needs to go back in and feed the relay control. So that, in theory, is a self-latching switch. Push this button while I have ignition power. It starts itself and feeds itself. Now, on this vehicle, the application failed because for some reason, once the ECM got a capacitor battery going on here, it fed back 12 volts on this side of the line. Uh, and it just basically continued to self-latch itself. So once I shut the vehicle down, it didn't disconnect the injectors and I could restart it. So that didn't work. So we were on to the next thing. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna try here is instead of using, so I have injector in to the relay.
ejector out. And I'm still gonna have this come over and be my button. That's still gonna go over to the ignition source. Cause I want, when you turn the ignition off, I want it to just completely kill the system. But I also wanted it not to be able to be engaged unless the key was in the uh, ACC or on position. Okay, so this is gonna be ground again. So now I can momentarily push this button and start the injector line, but it's not self-feeding. So I'm gonna find another circuit that has power during ignition on in the ACC position. And what I found was a fan relay. Now this fan relay is for the cooling fans. And at first glance, it seemed as if though it might work. So these are the controls for it. This is the ECM controls and ground for the relay. And this is the fan main in and fan main out. So I noted that the fan main in got power during ignition on. So I went, oh, okay, I can use this fan in during ignition on as my latch. But the problem with this one would be that that on key on that this has constant power. And the other problem that existed, so I could use this as a power source for for this switch and run that back through and there's a lot of different ways you could go about this and make it more more involved and more difficult than it needs to be. But the problem here that, that I was seeing with these external power sources is, is as soon as I went to the start position from the ACC position, uh, a lot of circuits drop voltage and the fan is one of them because it, it eliminates a lot of the circuitry so that it can focus on the starter. So regardless of the fact that this wasn't gonna work because this would constantly latch that anyway, uh, this dropped voltage during the start position uh, effectively dropping the injectors and of course it won't start while the injectors are not working. So on to the third way that I did this. Now I have to build a self-latching switch to provide power to this switch for the injectors. So here's what I came up with. All right, so here's what I ended up doing. So I need to control the injector in line through the relay and then back out. It's effectively the ECM fuse being removed, but it's listed as the injectors. Okay, so we're gonna disconnect that, need a power supply and a ground. Okay, so I found on the ignition, I found a power wire that has constant power during the start and the accessories position. I'm gonna use that for a second relay. I ran that into the mains of the relay, switched that off to run the power for that, in, for that relay. This, I still had my button wire ran, and that goes to ground. Now this effectively is this circuit, but I used a separate wire, which is also only in the ACC position. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, you can run this here. You can run two wires or whatever, but it's the same thing. It's the same circuit, basically. So, on key on, this has source power. You hit the momentary button. Now, that provides power to this, but it doesn't latch. So I had to run back on this output and run that back through on this button side. And th this is why I put the button here is because I didn't want this circuit feeding back on this circuit basically. Because then it'd be constantly latched as soon as you push start in the start position. You can't use this source in all positions. It has to be a dead line here. So put it in the ACC position, this line has power, this line has power. You push the button, it latches, this self feeds itself, continues to latch, providing power to the relay for the injectors, and that completes the injector circuit. 
when you turn the car off. This line gets killed. This line gets killed. Regardless, it's already dead. That shuts off the power here. That shuts off the latch. Drops the switch. Drops the power to this relay. Drops the injectors. You go to start the vehicle again. There's no injector line until you push this momentary button and relatch this system. You hide the button. Somewhere where nobody can see it. It's a momentary push button. And every time you turn the key into the ACC position, you push the button, it latches the system, you start your vehicle, no problem. Turn it off, it disconnects itself. You never forget to turn the switch off. And no, I didn't fail three times to make this circuit correctly. I learned two ways not to make this circuit. So this is the easiest way to make this circuit, uh, just so that the power source is on a different input. It's completely isolated. The only function that it has here is flipping this switch manually. So that is the system of a standard toggle switch electronically.